In this video, we're going to be having a look at the Raspad 3 touchscreen interface for the Raspberry Pi. Make sure you stick around. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surge Tech, and today we're going to be having a look at the Raspad 3. It's a touchscreen interface uh, for the Raspberry Pi 4, I know, name is a bit confusing, um, that has battery built in and gives you great access. It basically turns your Pi into a, a usable tablet, which is fantastic. So we're going to unbox it, we're going to set it up, plug it in, attach all the cables, download the image, and see what it's like. So let's get going. So you are going to need three things for this. You're going to need the Raspad 3. That comes with pretty much everything you need. You're also going to need a Raspberry Pi uh, Model 4 with a RAM designation of your choosing. And you're going to need an SD card to actually put the stuff on. So what have we got in this box? Ooh. Friction fit, lovely. Components list, a huge more what's it? The tablet itself, we'll come back to that in a second. Then we've also got a power supply, more power supply gubbins, all our cables. Oh, it comes with a screwdriver, how lovely. Some little componenty bits and some more componenty bits. Get rid of them. A lot of unnecessary plastic surrounding these components. Well, there we go. Right, so 10 hours later, we've got rid of almost all the plastic, which is great. Um, and we'll see what we've got. So this is the main unit itself. Uh, very nice, actually. Not too heavy, which is good. It sits nicely on a desk. Um, good angle to it. On the side, we've got Ethernet, USB 3 times 3, HDMI, audio, and the DC jack. And on the other side, we've got micro SD card slot, power, uh, volume and brightness, and then the battery level. And we've also got the GPIO pins accessible on the back. So they're not directly accessible. You need to use a ribbon cable, but if you want to use them, then you can put a ribbon cable in and you're sorted. So as for the features of this product, uh, we've got obviously a built-in touchscreen. It houses your Raspberry Pi and it's got a touchscreen interface, which is kind of a main blow out the water situation. It's got access to all your input output alongside, including the SD card, so you can hot swap that. It's got a built-in battery, so you don't have to keep it plugged in. Battery life isn't amazing, but it will last a good few hours if you wanted it to. Um, it's also got some built-in speakers and a built-in, and you can also apply an accelerometer so it knows which way around it is. So all in all, it's not bad. As for the price, it comes in at the moment at $207, which is about £150. Right, so let's set it up. We need to remove these five screws on the back. Okay, so this is the inside. We've got a little I.O. board on this side, which has got your micro USB and your buttons. Got two speakers down the bottom. The main logic board, which kind of passes everything through and controls the LCD display. And we've got the batteries at the back. 11.15 volts. So, as I said, this does only work with the Raspberry Pi 4, um, just because of the way the cables are. I imagine if you plug the 3 in, you just need to get different adapter cables and it would, would work fine. So, the first thing I'm going to do is plug in the SD card. And that is this little ribbon cable, which basically will come out and extend the SD card slot over to this external board. So we just plug that in because it's easy access whilst it's not attached. And then we're going to need a few screws and we're going to screw down this main Pi board. Okay, now that that's attached, we can connect all the connections up. So first thing we're going to do is USB. That's going to go from port on that side, bottom, into the port on this, slots in, got a bit of a curve to it. Uh, Ethernet cable, again, just passes straight through. 
We've then got two HDMI cables. One's a bit bigger than the other in terms of the, the angle joint. So the shorter one goes in first. And the tall one goes in second. And you want them to be on the outside of the screw hole so you don't accidentally nick it with your screw when you put that in. Then we've got our micro USB power cable, which goes between the two there. Again, on the outside. Right, so once that's done, we've got our SD card ribbon cable, which just folds over and slots into there. And then we can attach our heat sinks. So the little one is through a USB-C chip, medium one is for your RAM, and your big one is for your CPU. And we've also got a little accelerometer here, which means that it can tell the orientation of the tablet, so if you rotate it, it'll rotate the screen as well. Now it's to just push down onto the left hand pins with the chips facing upwards. It's not exactly the nicest connection, but it works. And then we've got the fan. Now the fan actually screws into the back. So if we bring the back back, aha, back back, we can see that the fan mounts onto here nicely. It just sits there and then it screws down with these tapping screws. What I really appreciate is they give you more screws than you need. Which is always very kind, especially when they're such small screws that you are almost certainly going to lose them. Right, so with that screwed down, that just slots into the main logic board. And then we can put it back together put these five little screws back into the back. And with that done, we can then look at installation. So that is the setup all done. Um, as for the install, I'm not going to run you through it all. It's well documented on the documentation online, um, which is linked below. Uh, it runs, the tablet and touchscreen runs natively on Raspberry Pi OS. So that's very easy to download, install onto an SD card through Etcher, plug in and it just works. Um, what you will want to do is install an on-screen keyboard, uh, and you do that using onboard settings. Um, again, well documented, you've got to install the thing, then fiddle around with some settings, reboot it a few times, and you should get an on-screen keyboard. Um, there are other things you can install, such as a right-click service via the touchscreen and the auto-rotate thingy-ma-job you've got to install separately. Um, and then you can also install the Raspad launcher, which just gives you a bit of a more touchscreen friendly uh, interface for rather than the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. You don't have to do that, but would recommend. So I've had this up and running for a little while, and so I've got to naturally share my thoughts. And it's quite cool. I quite enjoy it. Having a Pi that you can just have with a touchscreen uh, is great if you're to kind of doing experimentation and hobbies and want to fiddle around with stuff it used to be or in the past when I wanted to do that it's been such a faff getting a pie out connecting it to a monitor finding another HDMI cable finding a keyboard and mouse plugging all that in all of that sort of faff is is gone with this so it's one of those things that you can just tuck away and get out as and when you need and with the SD card slot on the side you can just swap out and load new things and try them out and then when you when they're ready and they're set up you can put it into a permanent Pi uh, install or something like that. So I would I would suggest this is very good for people who want to tinker. And if you get the GPIO pins coming out through the side of the case as well, you can fiddle around with all the inputs outputs of the Pi. Um, so it's a very cool bit of kit. Would I would I get it personally? I don't think I have the need for it. Um, I don't really tinker around with a Pi that much anymore. If I'm tinkering, tinkering around with electronics, I'm doing it with a D1 Mini, generally speaking. Um, so I don't need the brunt of a computer to go behind it. Um, 
I am currently using it as a little interface for OctoPrint, so I've got it sitting next to my 3D printer, and I can print via that and check progress and all that. So that is great, and it's nice to have a little device there, um, but I could just do that on a normal tablet, which would be cheaper anyway. So it's kind of up to you whether you think it will be useful for you. It is powerful, it is good, it is a great interface for the Raspberry Pi. So if you've got a use for it, I would recommend it. So I think the big thing that gets me really is just the price. Um, if you're going to spend 150 quid, you might as well just get five pies. But then again, if you value the convenience of having a permanent pie that you can just whip out and plug in an SD card and touchscreen interface that you can move around with, then it's, it's great and it's flawless in that respect. So there we have it, the Raspad 3, the Raspberry Pi touchscreen interface. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.